this live martial arts class we're talking street fight self-defense with your staff i'm going to show you two things you can do or three things you can do with each staff each length i'm going to start with the bow and then we're going to work on the joe so that's the long staff and the medium the medium sized staff but you need to warm up no matter what this is a good warm up for your wrists it gets the blood flowing in there it lubricates the joints but it also starts to build strength and power in the forearms yes you're the first one so you're just going side to side, 30 seconds, going to the other hand, and start to turn it out and back. You're pretty much the same warm up every time, and that's because it works. It works really well to keep you safe from injury, but it also works to really build the grip, the power in your hands to control the staff. And for self-defense, especially street fight self-defense, you don't want to lose your staff if you have to defend yourself. We're going to do things, some basic things like creating distance, pushing through the opponent, striking the opponent hard and fast, hard and fast, going through the middle. And when you do that, you get resistance on your staff. You hit them for self-defense. It's pushing through your hand. You don't want to drop it at any time. And that's why I want you to do these warm-ups. So after you do it side to side with one hand, you're going to start to go back and forth working on passing the staff from one hand to the other. Now for street fight self-defense or any kind of combat bow, you're not gonna spin the staff. You might in the Chinese style and some of the Korean style, but with this style of street fight self-defense, you wanna be immediate, direct, explosive. That means only do what works, be very practical, think in terms of principles, not necessarily techniques. But we are gonna talk about how to shift and change your hand position. So you've done this for about 30 seconds, and I want you to go into your basic position where you're behind the staff. You want the staff between you and the threat. So you're gonna stand, simply stand behind the stick between me, we're gonna call that bag the threat, and I'm going to point my thumb at the threat. When you point the thumb, you see that it comes up here into the backhand. So from here, it just comes up here, and the first thing you're gonna practice is just pushing right through it's a spearing motion i want to push in and go through the throat the eyes the nose the mouth the solar plexus you want to avoid that bone but if you hit that for self-defense don't worry just hit him again right but you're going to create that distance first you're walking with your staff you put the staff between you and the threat you point the thumb and now they have to get around that length of the staff that's one of the benefits of the martial arts long staff or the bow in this case i point this i can even have more distance between me if they have a knife i don't want them close the closer they are the more danger there is for you to get cut and the nice thing about your staff your martial arts long stick or even the medium sized stick we're going to go over in a minute it's not going to bleed it's not going to get hurt if he has a knife or let's say you have multiple attackers right you can create a lot of distance Swinging your hands through, pushing through, smashing down, coming up, sweeping the leg, changing hand position, driving in, hitting this person over here, this person here, that person behind you. And you're going to start with that basic idea. Step behind it, point your thumb at it. The threat. That's the threat. Step behind your staff, point your thumb at the staff, or the threat. Getting those two backward, but I think you've got it, right? I just point my thumb. That changes the angle. Right now it's perpendicular, coming out of the ground like a tree. Now I have that great angle and I have more control. I'm in the optimal position for self-defense. Now in this style, in a Japanese style especially, your hands are gonna be facing each other or alternated. It's different than the push-up grip that we might do if we were doing the Japanese or the Chinese style, right? We're doing a Chinese style. We're here. These are all good, valid strikes but for me personally i like to really think about this japanese style which i think is much more effective and practical it's like the difference between the butterfly uh, sword or the dao the chinese uh the tai chi sword lots of fancy flowing fun movements if you think about a movie like uh mulan which just came out or hidden uh crouching tiger hidden dragon or you think of the old japanese sword style the sword movies with the katana they're very practical. There's no flashiness. It's just business, all business. 
And that's what I like to think about when it comes to self-defense, street fight self-defense, with the, this weapon, with this long staff, I want to be very basic. I don't want to be flashy. I don't want to be spinning and turning. This is all good stuff and this is fun. This is for conditioning your body though. This is for getting you stronger and learning how to move through space and time. It's like a boxer jumps rope, but it's not for the street fight. It's not for self-defense. First principle, get behind it. Number two, better position. Point that thumb and push up and in. Now, if you happen to get caught off guard and the other foot is forward and the staff's not in front of you, let's say it's back here because you're walking, you can also bring it up in this position. And from here, your hands are still in that split position. You can strike here. You can then strike down, coming through, back, pulling in, pushing. All those are valid strikes. And which one do you do? Whichever one works. Don't think of technique, think of principle. The basic principle is uh, pay attention to what's happening while it's happening. Principle number one is situational awareness. Number two is getting a better position. Ideally, if you can, the staff between you, the wood that doesn't bleed, the wood that doesn't feel, between you and the threat. Number three, ask yourself, what are your targets? What are the targets that you're now going to remove temporarily, like their ability to see or breathe, or permanently, like their ability to breathe here because you smashed that cartilage and they can't, for self-defense. This is all self-defense, right? So you ask those questions. Maybe it's their ability to stab you with that knife and that hand's coming in and you smash the hand or you come through the face, smash the hand up through the throat, down on top of the head, up under the chin, all those basic positions. And notice my hand's not doing anything fancy. I'm not spinning. Now I wanted to show you this today because you've asked me. Thank you. I learned a lot from you guys too, especially when you give me comments in the comment section. Yes, that is true. That's why I advocate doing everything. Break the boards, but also spar as much as you can, right? And not just with the staff. Imagine that you've lost your staff or it broke or you didn't bring it today. Learn how to throw a couple punches and get out of the way. Learn how to take a hit and how to move your body. That's a really good point. Boards don't hit back. Bags, they simply don't hit back. There's no way, right? That's an obvious thing. It's just part of the training. It's like if you said to a boxer, look, man, stop punching that bag. Uh, stop hitting the speed bag. Don't jump that rope. When you get in the ring with the other boxer, he's going to be punching you. So if you punch that, no, <laughs> you can see the flaw in that thinking, right? You need, you have to say, yeah, boards don't hit back and they still have great value. So train with boards and train with someone who punches back. Everybody always misses the other half of that conversation. You know, bags don't punch back, man. Well, yeah, of course they don't. But you still need, you still need to create some wicked knockout power by punching this heavy swinging bag, let it come back, and then hit it again. And make your muscles more dense and make the bones more dense and learn how to strike harder and harder so that when you do get in the ring and the guy is throwing the punches back, not only can you learn how to cover and bob and weave and stick and move and know how to do that, but you also know how to knock them out because you punched that until your power got stronger and stronger. And you hit like the speed bags over there. I'm just pointing at it. You work that speed bag, not full rhythm, but you get used to that punch coming to your face so you don't flinch. So the same thing's true with this. From here, practice, practice, practice. Get the power. And when I do that, I get all that resistance in there. That's 275 pounds of water in that bag. And it pushes back when I'm striking against my hand. I don't want the first time that I get some experience of what that feels like and, and, and it makes me drop my staff. It will. And I see it all the time. The first time someone starts to push against some resistance, it, they, they learn that they need a tighter grip. And so don't learn that the first time when you have to defend yourself, especially street fight self-defense. Do as much training as you can, learn what it feels like, get some confidence in your hands. You know, your hand has some feelings too. Let them learn some confidence. All right, so we're here. I'm gonna talk about the strikes again in a minute. I want you to first practice 
taking your hand and putting it in the other position without taking your hand off of it. Because when it comes to street fight self-defense with the staff, you can't afford to take your hand off to change hand positions. So you're going to walk your hands on the bow, open the fingers, rotate your palm, so your fingers are now up, close it, and then open the fingers, rotate your palm down and close it. And then do the other side. And now practice this. You're gonna to start to get more together. Slow is smooth, smooth is fast. You're gonna practice changing your hand positions. Now, another way to do this is a little bit fancier and it does include a roll, but you can see that my hand is either touching the staff or it's touching my other hand and then the staff as I'm spinning it. This is a little bit more advanced. I wouldn't suggest this at the beginning, but you can certainly practice it at the beginning. Practice this now. All that is is I'm, this is my right hand. I'm pushing the left hand up, right hand down at the same time. That creates a lot of extra speed, which is really fun. Good afternoon. Goes over the back of your hand, almost like a butterfly spin. This hand comes up, stays in contact with your hand, grabs the staff again, and then you're going back the other way. So that's the advanced version. This is where everybody should get really good. Practice changing your hand position. Then get back in your ready position. Ready position for this, for street fight self-defense. Put it between you and the threat. Point your thumb at the threat and then practice changing your hand position. So from here, facing the threat, facing the threat. See that? Here comes the change. And that's the dip, that's the, um, the opposite of doing this and that. See how I'm doing that? That's how you do it when you don't know what you're doing. Not you, but somebody else, right? From here, practice walking your hands on your bow. It's not as fancy, it's not as cool, but you're gonna feel what a great workout it is and how much stronger and more confident you become when you're handling your staff for self-defense. Street fight self-defense especially. Then go back into this position. Practice your spearing motion. I want to show you, we'll focus on two main variations, right? From here, point the thumb. The first one is just pushing. And notice when I push, there's a turn in my arm. And the turn, yeah, it's, it's your soul, man. Blood, sweat, and tears go into your staff, literally. The more you practice. The oils from your hand get in your staff. That's why I like, if you get one of these staffs from the link below, I put the link to the store below, sand off all of the lacquer finish, whatever's on that, so that you, the wood can start to get the moisture, the, not the moisture, but the oil from your hands. That makes it more flexible, keeps it from breaking, makes it hit harder, all that stuff. Put your soul into it. But yes, it should be an extension of your body. The great thing about weapons training is when you practice, and that's why I like spinning. Again, you don't use spinning for fighting, but you can practice spinning because it's going to improve your uh, timing and distance in your proprioception, your, your understanding of space and time and where your staff is all the time. And when you do it wrong, you whack yourself in the head or you hit your elbow, you bust your knee, or you scrape your foot. And that's immediate feedback. And I welcome that. You should welcome that because then you're getting better faster. But when we talk about street fight self-defense, where you're not doing any spinning, we're doing basic blocking and striking. And if you have your way, striking, hit him first. He pulls out a knife, don't wait till he comes at you, stick it through his face for self-defense or through the throat or the uh, solar plexus or into the groin, smash the knee, smash the head, smash the hand that has the knife. Don't hesitate, don't wait. When a knife comes out, that's a cue, go right for you immediately immediate direct and explosive immediate is the most important part of that immediate direct and explosive most people if you have a choice in an altercation a fight for self-defense you always go first right whoever goes first often wins so you're in this position he pulls out the knife you don't want to wait you're not timing it immediately maybe it's his habit to pull it out and threaten people and threaten you and his experience is that the other person cowers and withdraws. And your experience is, as soon as you see a knife, 
<clears throat> you use that adrenaline that just shoots out of you, that fear, and you go straight in. Yeah, it's, uh, everybody's watching, everything, right? So many people got uh, shut down again, the second shutdown, and then everybody's watching the election in the United States. There's so much bandwidth being consumed right now. It, internet's spotty. So, but I, I appreciate your trying. From here, immediate, straight in. So you have this spearing motion first. The second is gonna increase distance, speed, and power. And the second is going to be like a pull, like shoot, some of you guys know how to shoot pull, right? You shoot pull all the time, you're really good at it. It's the same idea. It's not that you're not gonna do this with your fingers. It's not the same hand position. From here, I'm going to push. So as I go in, notice that my whole body is lunging into it. Now that's different than leading with your chin. Don't ever lead with your chin. When you, when you fight, you want your body to move and move. You don't want your, your it's not your head. Your whole body moves when, with, in your head, it's attached to your body, so it moves. Same thing is true when you lunge. The body's moving, that brings the head forward, but notice how it doesn't go past the shoulder. Sometimes, when you're inexperienced, when you first start, you have a tendency to push your head forward. Try to watch yourself, see if you're doing that. From here, it comes up to your thumb, put your thumb at the threat, and then push. And see, I've got that red tape so you can see what's happening. From here, it's coming up. Um, if you have a choice between, between a, a coupaton and nothing, go for the coupaton. If you have the choice between a coupaton or maybe a coupaton and, but the key, you know, a lot of people carry the coupaton or the Yaki, the, the Yawara. It's just a basic stick. It's about this long, right? The coupaton is a name of a person who used the Yawara, which is the Japanese stick. Koreans have a, a short stick too, attached to a, a rope goes around their thumb. The police officers used to carry it. Um, yeah, better than nothing. Stick against blade, always better than finger, hand against blade, skin against blade. So if you have, if you have a stick that's better than nothing, you can hit pressure points, joint locks, come along techniques, all that stuff that I learned. I used to carry the coupaton as a military policeman. I trained on it, I taught people on it. So I'm not opposed to it, but if you have the walking cane, or a coupaton. Maybe you can't carry the walking cane or you don't feel comfortable yet, but I would choose a much longer weapon if you could. Now let's talk about the Joe, which is just, this is the Japanese Joe. It's a little bit shorter. If you size your Joe, you want it to come up right to about where your armpit starts, right? So that when you hold it, you have about this much coming out. This one's a little bit shorter, so it's not as long, but the basic principles are the same. Point your thumb at the threat, and then in this case, you really want to use that extension as you go through your opponent, right? And you don't have to lunge if they're too close as it is, and you can just push. And you can see that generates a lot of force. It's also a pattern interrupt. Remember I was telling that idea that the punk, the thug, the jerk, whatever they are, the criminal, the criminal-minded person, they pull out that knife, and they're used to seeing people cower in fear, and then they, they steal them of their money, their dignity, their life, their everything, their good health. And, but the first part is, so in their mind, especially if they've done it more than once, they, they, they feed on that adrenaline. They have this picture of what's gonna happen. The guy goes like this, and you, you were like this when you saw him get too close, and they pull that knife and you immediately stuck it right through his face. That's called a pattern interrupt. The pattern that he expected, that thunk, that pug, punk, thug, whatever, right? Antifa member, uh, because they keep finding them with those. That anarchist pulls that out and you stick that right into, through his face. That interrupts whatever pattern, whatever the jollies they're getting off of seeing you get all upset and, and afraid. But, but the point is immediate, right? You have to be trained. You either prepare or panic. You get the second shut down in a lot of places in Europe, a lot of places uh, like cities like Chicago and the United States, New York, you have all these people getting more and more desperate as they steal more and more of our jobs away from us because we can't open our businesses and people start to get more desperate and there's more drugs and there's more, and I'm not trying to paint a, a difficult picture because it's more about um, what you do when these things happen. You can't control, I can't control what's happening. We can't control any of it, but we can control how we prepare for it and God forbid, hopefully it never happens, but if you can prepare, prepare, 
that's what we're doing here, right? I'm preparing, learning how to use the stick. I point my thumb at the threat, it comes to the backhand, create distance. That's the first strike, either spearing both hands at the same time or a combination of pushing and there's also the sliding here to create that distance. Now, with this weapon, I'm gonna go show you also with the longer staff, with, but this is the hiking stick. Picture this, a really cool piece of, um, you know, a, a hiking stick that you got while you were hiking somewhere really cool, or maybe you ordered it on Amazon or whatever. You have this nice hiking stick, and maybe it's a little bit longer than this. It works the exact same way. Or maybe it's a walking stick, works the same way. Walking stick self-defense, hiking stick self-defense is basically the same as the Joe, for the most part. The Joe has a lot more cool things that you can do that you might not do if you are, um, you know, training and pushing. That's the one I was looking for. And sliding through some things that you would do that are Joe specific that you might not do with your walking stick. But you can, you can practice with your walking stick, get really familiar with how it works and all that kind of stuff and then use it for your self-defense. Back to the basic principles though, because street side, street fight self-defense is not about flashy spinning it's about what works create the distance there's one you can also as you bring it down your hand see how my hand's going to push and slide at the same time put i'm pushing forward as i'm sliding down this hand is just turning i have a nice tight grip with my right hand and i'm sliding down and the same thing is true if i did it on the other side and the same thing is true on the hand changing you can practice if you use the medium size of the joe practice your hand changing in that position from here i create the distance strike extremely hard right strike arm got the knife take out the knife take out the legs uh maybe it's a, a vicious animal take out the animal for self-defense now if you're in the other position just like i said before with the longer staff and that the staff isn't between you and the threat it's in the backhand they came in quickly or you're more comfortable this way you simply bring it up like this now you still have that uh distance between you you still have length advantage his knife is like that long <laughs> you've got him beat by about two feet right so from here you can bring it up here and it's extremely hard from here i can also bring this through this way i can push through from here i accelerate as i come back i kind of push with this hand see how that spins it from here it spins and i drive through bringing it down in that position pushing to here or pushing it up here with a strong grip using just one hand because you can use one hand or you can use the other hand on it with this kind of a weapon. Now, I'm gonna, I, in, in my uh, workouts, when we work out together, I'll show you all the different techniques and how to practice them, how to do them. But for today, as we're talking about street fight self-defense with a very practical weapon, with the staff, I want you to learn this, and I want you to learn this. It looks like this and this. Now, see how my hands are apart? That allows me to bring it to a stop so that I can keep that length between me and the threat. If you need to, or if you want to, good, it's good to see you too. You can bring the hands together, which creates a pivot point, and you won't be able to stop it very easily, but you're gonna be swinging so much harder and so much faster for self-defense, you can end the fight right here. So again, from here, distance, bringing it down, bring it to a stop, the hands apart, or slide the hands together, but you're gonna go faster, and you're gonna go all the way through. Now, when you go through, you can bring it back up. You can bring it back into one of the other fancy positions, but I don't want you to get fancy. I want you to get practical for street fight self-defense. This is a very important thing. From here, I push, I bring it here. Now watch what I do when I slide. Remember that sliding and pushing accelerates the speed. I was here. I did my first strike here. You can practice that, put them together, thrust, strike at that angle, thrust, strike, then slide this hand up, slide that hand forward and come through with a horizontal strike using the back, back hand to drive 
through their head, knock them out, turn off their operating system, fights over you win for self-defense, street fight self-defense, not to hurt anybody on purpose, but you have every right to protect yourself. And you have to learn how to speak up too and say that, hey, back up. I have every right to defend myself. You don't have to like me, but you can't touch me. You don't have to like me, but you can't hurt me. You don't have to agree with my politics, my opinions, my stance in life, my gender, my beliefs, but you can't hurt me. That's my uh, human right. No matter where you are, even if your country doesn't support it, that's your human right. Your human right is that you should be able to feel, think, do, be who you are as a human being, as long as you're not hurting anybody else. And when somebody else comes up to try to impose their will on you because there's some kind of low life or uh, they got messed up thinking or whatever it is, you need to be able to speak first. And this sometimes gives people a little bit extra confidence. And that's where we come up with that phrase, speak softly. <laughs> and carry a big stick, right? And then when you start to carry that big stick, you learn how to then put the right words in, which is, hey, you don't have to like me, but don't touch me. I have every right to defend myself. And then hopefully they paid attention to the fact that you have this big oak uh, Joe or walking stick or the bow or whatever. And then from here, you have options. You can, from this position, you can go into a protective position. But this position is non-threatening. Well, it is a little bit because of my staff, right? But if I'm here and I just come to here, that's non-threatening because the length is down. But from here, I can immediately bring it to here. I can bring it to here. I can just bring it straight through here. And my favorite one, especially with this one right here, yes, always, always. You know, that's the thing about fights. Fights, first of all, you're not supposed to fight. I firmly believe that it's uh, human nature. It's my Christian belief. It's my personal belief that we should avoid, we shouldn't hurt other people, right? We should learn how to turn the other cheek. But you also learn how to put your hands up and say, you know, you don't have any right to take that, my, those things from me can't take my dignity. You can't take food out of my kid's mouth. All that kind of stuff. Um, yeah. And you know what? And it's going to seem crazier than it really is. And that's the fact. It seems so crazy and insane right now, but it really is not as crazy as it is in pockets. It is in places. And if you're in one of those places, get yourself a staff. Better yet, get a cane. Uh, we do the cane all the time. But let me show you this real technique before I get way off topic. I just point that thumb and I don't have time to get it here. That's one of my favorites. But let's say I just bring it up here, back up, you're too close, don't come any closer, and then just straight in. And think about this hard corner. So now this hard corner, even though it's a small piece, all of your force of that pushing, thrusting motion of that front hand is concentrated right there. And that doesn't seem like a big deal. If I were to hit the bag this way, I can move it. I can't move it as hard as if I were to slam it like that, but you don't need to because your target is right there, right? Right there, the teeth. That motion is enough to knock someone's teeth out of their throat or into their throat. <laughs> right there, that's enough to make someone asphyxiate and die for self-defense. So from this position back up, and then you just come straight in, jabbing motion to the side, striking, and then slide this through if you practice. So this is where you practice. Push, bring it back down, come up at that angle. Maybe you're coming through, maybe that knife is coming out. You've got to strike that hand away. And then from this position, your hand can come to the back, coming straight in. You have a very strong supported strike in that position. You come here. If you wanted to change positions, you just from here. From this, you bring it up to here, and then slide that hand into that other position, and then strike, strike, thrust, strike, block, strike, whatever it is, right? It doesn't matter, and when you go slowly and you start to practice these different things, it starts to make more sense. This is what we did early in the workout. But the basic idea is, you have a big piece of wood that doesn't bleed for street, side, street fight self-defense that gives you more options. From here, just straight in, pushing. There's a little turn in the shoulder, pushing off the floor, turn the hips, and practice that, practice that. And again, 
doesn't have to be extremely hard. It'll be fast because it's such a small motion and you're turning with your body and it accelerates here. But then that tip right there, that hard wood, that's going into the nose, the bridge of the nose, between the eyes, into an eye, into the teeth, pulling the teeth. They'll just come out. They'll be like this long too. Into the throat, into the solar plexus, into the groin. You can see that from here, from just straight in. And then from there, that second strike. From here, coming in, striking, changing your hand position for whatever technique you want to do next. And your hands, just because you practiced it so many times, your hands are able to move all along your weapon and you can continue to fight, especially if there's multiple attackers. There's an attacker here, this guy, that person, that person, and you just practice over and over. Now that's the Joe, that's the shorter staff. And, I, and, and I'm intentionally not doing a lot of spins. We did a couple of warm-up moves, and then I told you, for street fight self-defense, you're not gonna spin. But the reason that you do spin is to build strength, speed, power. It's conditioning for the body, body like the boxer jumping rope. I said striking the bags. Yes, they don't, they don't hit back. But a boxer boxes, and it, before they ever get in the ring for their first opponent, they've thrown thousands of punches on different types of bags. Even though they never, they don't punch back. You do that to condition the body, to build strength, speed, power, capacity. You wanna learn all that. Now, I wanna talk a little bit, just real quickly, about blocking. Now I said, if you have a choice, don't block, but you should still know how to block. If I'm here and I strike this guy, but this guy's coming over here to hit me, then I want you to simply push up or push down. And the idea is, as long as the attack comes somewhere between your two hands, pushing up, pushing down, you're going to be able to defend yourself. So practice pushing up at an angle, up and lock the arms, up and then down. But every time you practice, bring it into your chest first. So from the chest, up and down. Strike this guy, hit the one behind me, the one's coming here, he's too fast, I got the block first, and then I'm gonna bring it down on top of his head and in the fight, the street fight, self-defense, in the fight, because I don't wanna keep, you know, I don't wanna risk it. I wanna get it over with, as, you wanna get it over with as soon as possible. So again, from here, I'll let you see if I back up a little, up, down, up, down. And when you practice it and you lock the arms out, please, yes, yeah. And what was the movie? Uh, the Rock remade it, but the first one was Brian Dennehy. When I was a kid, I watched that movie, uh, Walking Tall, and the sheriff, comes back from Vietnam, he's special forces, Green Beret, and it's show him no respect. That's where it always starts, the guy's getting no respect. It's like Rambo coming back. Gets no respect, corruption everywhere, he runs for sheriff, and it's based on a true story. That's what I like about it the most. Plus he's got a Bronco, and I love Ford Broncos. Brian Dennehy did anyway, I think so. And he had that really cool, I think it was like a sheepskin jacket with the, the lining, you know? Who's seen that? I'm just speaking to the old people right now, the old geezers like me. Anyway, um, if you saw, I, I like The Rock's version too. You watch The Rock, it's got him and that crazy guy with the blue eyes. And Anyway, from here, from the chest, up, from the chest, down, and locking the arm, locking the arm. This is where you're going to build a lot of strength and power in your upper body. Then practice coming across your body and across your body. Block across and block across. Now, I don't want you to worry too much about, yeah, <laughs> Joe Don Baker. I love it. How about um, Billy Jack? Billy Jack, I don't think he ever used the staff. I have to go back and watch that movie or the TV series. But do uh, you remember his saying, Master Hernandez? I'm gonna take, I think he said, I'm gonna take my right foot and stick it on the left side of your face, and there's nothing you can do about it. He wore those cool cowboy boots, and he had like a jean jacket, and jean, he had like Chuck Norris action jeans, so he could like get his leg up there, and bam, smack the guy. 
martial arts uh, of yesterday, right? All right, um, blocking across the body, blocking this way, blocking this way, one, two, and again, wherever the punch is, you just have to, yeah, Billy Jack. Billy Jack, um, go back and watch Billy Jack now and you'll be saying, what is this hippy dippy movie with the Rachel Carlson, Carson, Silent Earth. Some of you guys know exactly what I'm talking about. Rachel Carson, Silent Earth, the whole movie. When I, when I was a kid, all I remember was this tough dude coming back, man, he's a Green Beret. He told you, and then bam, he's got that foot and he smacked him in the face because he told him and the guy was wrong and he was right. He was just trying, he was trying to avoid the fight though. He's trying to avoid the fight. The guy wouldn't let him. He had to show him, he had to prove, you know, whatever, not prove. He had to uh, defend himself, Billy Jack. And uh, Bang Su Han, Bang Su Han was his uh, Hapkido instructor. Hapkido uses the staff sometimes. Blocking here, blocking here. But what I was gonna say was, make sure the hand is above your head when you block. A lot of times people do this, and that's just not as strong. From here, you wanna block above the head, above the head. One, two, one, two, but that's too complicated. You don't have to do that. It's like a high block and a low block. You really don't need any other blocks. Martial arts, traditional ones, they have this one, this one, this one. They have all these cool hand blocks and stuff, right? The double blocks, and they're all good blocks, but really, if you make a circle, you cut your body in half. From here up, everything is a high block, if you do it right. From here down, everything is that low block. Now, do you want to use your bone against a baseball bat? No. <laughs> Block the hand that has the weapon. Now, the only time that's uh, different is if it's a knife and you can block them out here where you are. They're coming in here. You can lift that. They're coming with the knife. You can bring the stick up under their arm and then smash it down through their head. But like I said at the very beginning, if you have a choice, you're standing here, you're in your protective position, the staff's between you and your opponent, he's got the knife, you put it up in your backhand as he becomes a threat, because you're, you're paying attention to what's happening around you, situational awareness. You see it coming. You don't feel safe. You get in this position before he closes the distance. That knife comes out because he's used to threatening people and seeing them cower. Instead, you flip the switch. You take the fear and you turn it into indignation. Indignation means, come on, man, you put on a knife at me? What's wrong with you? You don't have any right to do that to me. You're not allowed to threaten me like that. And you use that because it's usually fear. Fear, coward. Indignation, fight. Preparation. We're preparing so we don't have to panic. So from here, pulls out the knife. You don't wait until he takes another step. You don't wait until there's a lunge. You have a direct line between the end of your stick and his solar plexus, use it into his eyes, right through his eyes, right? And if you miss, you smash, bring the backhand through, bring it up under the groin, down over the top. No spins, no spinning involved. Just basic, basic self-defense. The idea of using a big stick to defend yourself. He pulls out that knife, slide back, give yourself more distance, right? Slide in. Slide back, just think of like pulling against a rope. It's that simple. Don't overcomplicate it is my point. We do too much. Yes, that's the biggest killer of uh, uh, situational awareness is the phone. Think about how many people do that while they should be watching the road, right? And you look up and it's all age groups. Hello, it's good to see you. It's been a little bit, right? So back to uh, what we're working on, and then I want to, I want to, uh, I got to kick out. So, first step, situation awareness, always pay attention. Number two, get in a better position. Point your thumb at the threat, especially with this long staff. Number three, you have to ask yourself, what are my targets? What are the targets going to remove or destroy? Eyes, ability to see, ability to breathe, ability to chase, run, kick, hit you with a knife, punch you with a fist. That's your target. Whatever target is there. Don't overthink it. You don't have to do some fancy, schmancy, big move. You just do whatever's immediate, direct, and explosive. Whatever you can do uh, the, f the first, the fastest, and the hardest. And if that means right here, turning off their, 
Yeah, good for you. I was a blue belt. From here, ask Master Gary Hineta. He'll tell you. We all were there one day. Create distance and then keep fighting back here. That's why I like for street fight self-defense. And one of you said to me, you know, I had to defend against multiple people. And I believe that's true. And there were a couple knives involved. And your staff broke or your improvised staff. Because really, you can improvise anything to use. Practice Thrusting, angular strike, horizontal strike. Practice high block into your chest, low block, across the body, across the body. It's as simple as that. Don't overcomplicate it. Practice those and then with the Joe. If you have both, train with both. I train with both every day. I suggest once you get used to one, get the next one. Get this one, the shorter staff. This is like the walking stick, the hiking stick you can carry with you anywhere you go. And it just looks like... You know, it looks like you're practicing for when the shutdowns are done and you're ready to go on a trek. Maybe you're going to trek from Nepal to uh, the base camp or, uh, you know, to like Kathmandu to, what's it called, uh, Everest. You're going to trek to Everest or you're going to go to Machu Picchu or you're going to walk through Europe or you're going to trek through whatever, you know, uh, there's so many beautiful things. The highlands in Scotland and Ireland. And people say, oh, that guy's out or that girl's out, she's just practicing using her walking stick, and you're just giving yourself a couple more options. With this one, better position is here. Just, hey, back up, and then you have this first one. You have that hooking motion. You bring this backside through. If you wanna learn the, the Joe, go to some of my Joe videos. You can learn some of those strikes and spins, or this position, pushing in, or if it's in the backhand, this position striking in this way, changing hand position, that downward strike, either the hands apart so you can control it or the hands together so you can increase the speed and the devastating power of that strike coming down here. And think about your targets, not always the head, it's the hand with the knife, it's the arm that's about to punch or grab, it's the hip, it's the ribs, it's the leg, right? Either pushing the hands apart and then stopping or coming together. From this position, you have thrust, downward strike, horizontal strike, just like you did with the bow, the other one. Oh, good. Well, we all, yeah, hopefully we're all saying the same basic things, right? Um, the Joe should come up to your armpit so that when you hold it, you have, this one's a little short. I believe this is 50 inches. 54 inches is like the average height, but we're all different heights. And even if we have the same height to here, like I have a long torso and shorter legs. Some people have super long legs and a shorter torso. Some people are at 50-50. So your armpit, which is my point, is gonna to come to a different spot depending on who you are, even if we have the same head height. So that's the uh, basic rule. This will work. See how much is there? That's enough to defend yourself. If you can, you'd want just a little bit more to have about this more. Good question. Depending on where they catch it. If your hands are here and they put their hand in the middle, twist. Anytime you twist, that takes it off. Better yet, twist and strike. Twist, strike. Twist, strike. They're not going to be able to hold on to it, even if they have it with two hands, even if their hands are split. If your hands are up apart, you're going to twist it and strike, twist, strike, and then push. And that's gonna knock them back. If they grab it by the tip, one of my favorite moves at all time, and I, and I have several videos, uh, you have to just go back and look for them, and you'll see, there'll be a video of me holding like this, and then there's some guy like this, all twisted out, and I show you in those videos what it looks like with a partner. I just don't have a partner here. Master Gary Hernandez and I were gonna get together and do some of these things to show you. Um, this one is an inch and a quarter. I suggest a little bit smaller diameter, but I got these because I've been really uh, practicing extensor moves to work on tightness. I got all, all of the, I'm starting to get a little bit of tendonitis again from doing these videos every day. And then I thought, oh, I need to practice. So I started doing this. This is how you get rid of it on each finger. And all you're doing is you're Pulling back, go for um, an inch or like three quarters of an inch for your Joe, if it's a hard wood and it'll be nice and durable. And go for a little bit more quality. 
the link below has some canemasters.com. They make a really sweet Joe and it's pricier, but it gives you a lot of different options of how they'll finish it, what kind of oils, but they'll last you forever. Thank you, I appreciate that, Wilson. So you do that, 30 seconds per hand, just back and forth. And then the second thing is, take your fingers, elbows bent, this hand's here, thumb, don't worry about it, and then just extend and hold back. And I like to do these on the floor because I, it gives me more resistance but just 30 seconds per hand. And that, all that, that's all that is. And that's a lot of flexibility. It's not the most, there's a lot of, some people could bring their fingers all the way back. But if you're not here, if you're still here, that's okay for now. Don't beat yourself up, ever, right? There's plenty of other people in the world that wanna do that for you. <laughs> Let them be the jerk, be nice to yourself. But go through your fingers, this is the third one, and this is really about strengthening and engaging the muscles that are in contrast, that are opposite of your closing muscles. You want your opening muscles, your extensors, so extensors and flexors, flexors, extensors. But this will really help build that strength and get that balance back so you get rid of all those things in your hands and your wrists. Uh, it doesn't have to be. Choice, this one has a tiny, tiny taper. Uh, my favorite one, which is still in Ohio, I still haven't been able to get it down, is a White Oak Joe made by this company that doesn't exist anymore, but uh, an Aikido company. Uh, Master uh, Hiroshi Ikeda used to make, um, the pants I wear come from his, the person who bought his company, it's now a European company, but he used to be in uh, Colorado Springs. Hiroshi Ikeda was this, is a brilliant uh, Aikido master. Aikido uses the Joe quite a bit the Joe and the Boken, but different than like a Kobudo school, a Kobudo school that focuses mostly just on the Okinawan or Japanese weapons. And I can't wait. I can't wait until someone comes into the comment section and tells me how I pronounced all those Japanese words incorrectly, which I'm completely fine with because I'm not Japanese, nor have I ever lived there or studied the language for any significant amount of time. No disrespect intended. It's just that I would rather spin my staff and practice striking and learning how to defend myself than learning the language. It's just me. Do both. If you have time, do both. I only have time for one, so I want to be able to defend my family. I'm going to spin and strike. Yeah, so here's how you do it with the staff. If, you, if you're not strong enough yet, start in your hand, open, pull the last three fingers behind turn it down and then use this hand to help you and just do the stretch go this fast and learn where your finger is supposed to be and allow yourself not to be good at it until you're really good at it it's like that old saying anything worth doing is worth doing well that's that's a total lie anything worth doing is worth doing so bad that everybody else is laughing at you and you just don't care because you really want to do it and you know how valuable it is and you're really bad at it and you allow yourself to be bad at it until you get really good. Anything we're doing is we're doing poorly because if you do it, you're going to get better and better. And as long as you keep training, you don't quit. That's why I keep saying, keep training, keep training. There's never an end to training. There's app. You need application though. You need to apply it. All right. That's all I've got. Do that on both hands. I know it's a little kind of all over the place, but I wanted to show specifically the, a little bit of the differences, some of the things you can do. If you have a Joe, if you have a uh, bow staff, it's in the backhand, how to bring it up, create that distance. Blocks are the same. Hand walking, changing your hand position. I mean, if you can, if you can block this way, oh, wait a minute, the other way, that way, and that way, that way. But see, I'm back into that push-up position. And that's not wrong, that's just different. But you can block this way, you can block this way. That's probably more correct. Um, I make mistakes all the time too. I think I put, showed you a little bit different before. Both ways work, by the way. One's just a little bit stronger. But 
don't try not to make mistakes. You'll never grow. All right. Thank you so much. Check the link below if you need a staff or any other mar martial arts items because it's a full martial arts supply store and they ship it. Their shipping is so fast. Prices are really reasonable. I'll see you guys in a little bit.